Hey y'all, I've got a story for you. So the first time I ever tried to implement math centers in my classroom, it was my second year of teaching and it was a hot mess. I ran off some old school file folder games. You know what I'm talking about? And I just kind of placed them in random spots around my room and I said, okay, this kid, this kid, and this kid, they're gonna go play this game. And then this group of kids, they're gonna go play this game. And I thought that that would work and I would just pull kids to the small group table and teach a lesson. Do you think that that worked? No, it did, <laughs> it absolutely did not. It was such a hot mess. My, there was chaos everywhere. It was loud. Kids were all over the place. And I quickly became frustrated. And over time, I learned that if I wanted to continue teaching math centers or math, I call them stations. So if I wanted to continue math stations in my classroom, then I needed to come up with some simple routines and procedures to put into place so that that time during the day would run smoothly. And so that's what I'm gonna share with you today is I have five simple routines and procedures for implementing guided math into your classroom. So let's dive in and get started. Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Marcy Bernithi and I am the teacher author behind SaddleUpForSecondGrade.com where I love helping teachers just like you implement guided math into their day without feeling stressed and overwhelmed. And stress and overwhelm, that's exactly what I felt when I first tried stations or centers, whatever you want to call them, when I first tried it for the very first time. So um, this was almost 10 years ago. And so then the term guided math wasn't really a thing. So then I just called it my math station time. And it was very stressful. It was very overwhelming. My kids, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to work together. So there was lots of arguing. There was lots of interruptions at the small group table. They didn't know how to rotate. They didn't know how to clean up. And what I quickly learned was that these simple things, like we as an adult think that, oh, it's simple. Like they should know how to clean up a game and put it back on the shelf. Or they should know how to rotate from one station to the other, right? Well, as a kid, they need to be taught those things. So I learned that I needed a set of routines and procedures if I wanted my station time to run smoothly in my classroom because all I was dealing with was interruptions and I wasn't getting any actual teaching done at the small group table. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. I'm gonna share five simple routines and procedures that you can implement into your classroom to streamline your station time. So the first one is simple. You need a set of rules put into place so that you can implement station time into your day. So what are those rules? Let me share mine with you. So I have six simple rules. What I did was I had this poster and I had it displayed on our guided math bulletin board so that they were always there for students to see and we referred to them often. So each of these rules that I'm about to explain I had to model with my students. They needed to be shown how to do things correctly. I also had to model how to do things incorrectly so that they could see the difference in between the two. So I'm gonna quickly go over these six and then some of these I'm gonna break down even further. So rule number one was they had to stay in one spot the whole time because how many of you have a student and they might be completing an activity and they procrastinate instead of doing what they're supposed to do. And so they get up and they move to another spot and then they're like, oh, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna move over here. No, we, one of the, my rules was each station that we did, there was a designated location for that area. Now, they could sit on the floor, they could sit on a chair. Um, if you have flexible seating options, that was okay, but they were not allowed to move around the room. They had to stay in one spot the whole time. Rule number two was they had to use appropriate voice levels, which I'll discuss more here in just a minute. 
Rule number three was they had to have good teamwork. And you would be surprised, well, actually, if you're watching this video, you're not going to be surprised because you're a teacher and you know, but kids, they have to learn how to work together and they have to learn how to work co cooperatively with one another. Then they need to be able to take care of materials such as manipulatives, using dry erase boards and markers and how to take care of those materials. Then rule number five was ask three before me, which I'll share more about in just a minute. And then rule number six was they had to clean up and put away all of their materials neatly. And so we would model and practice how to clean up an activity and how to put it up the right way. And those are things that we had to practice over and over and over again before we could even start implementing or before we could even begin to do our math station rotations. They had to be able to do these six things independently before we could even start. So what I did was I had these rules, I had them posted on my board so, and we referred to them daily. And if at any time I saw a student not following these directions, we stopped what we were doing, we gathered back at the carpet, and we would talk about why we had to stop and we would model the correct and positive behavior. So stick with me because at the end of this video, I will share how you can grab my set of rules and how you can get these posters for free. So stick with me. All right, number two is going to be voice levels. So. Voice levels, if you are not familiar with them, is a classroom management strategy that has several different levels for how your voice should sound. So one level might be a whisper voice. Another one might be partner talk. Another might be teamwork or group work. And so what this does is this teaches your students how to control their voice. Because let's face it, kids are loud. I'm loud. And when you have... 25 kids in a room and they're talking loudly, it can get really overwhelming, especially if you're trying to teach at the small group table or if a student is having trouble focusing on their independent activity. We want them to be able to control their voices. And so what I did was I displayed this voice level poster up on my um, math bulletin board, and then I just used a clothespin to move up and down to represent what voice level we were using at that time. And so when we are practicing our routines and procedures, we model and practice what does level one sound like, what does level two sound like, and so forth. Then I also printed these posters really small, um, and where they would fit in a five by seven plastic picture frame. I got these at the local dollar store and then I kept these at my table groups. And again, um, I had a student in charge at each group and they would move the clothespin up and down along the picture frame to represent what voice level was being used during that rotation. All right, so tip number three is to implement ask three before me. So what I would do so that I could cut down on interruptions at the small group table was I would choose three student helpers. These three students that I would pick, are they are going to be students that are responsible. You know that they can follow the rules. And these three students are gonna be able to explain or answer a question that another student might have. So these are gonna be kids that can read the directions of an activity and be able to explain it to another student. And so the reason why I implemented this strategy was because I would have so many interruptions at the small group table from kids coming up to me and they would be tapping me on the shoulder saying, Miss Pranithi, Miss Pranithi, I don't know what to do. And I was dealing with so many of those things that I wasn't actually getting any teaching done at my at my small group time. And so by implementing Ask Three before me and having these three student helpers was if a student had a question, maybe they didn't understand something or they just needed help, they had to go ask these three students before they could come ask me a question at the small group table. And this helped cut down on student in interruptions tremendously. All right, and tip number four also goes along with minimizing student interruptions. 
And that is to have early finisher activities. Because again, you're always gonna have those kids that can zip through whatever activity they might be doing. And so they'll come up to you and they'll say, Miss Bernithi, like I'm done now, what am I supposed to do? So I had an I'm done now what board. And honestly, this is just a blank poster. I put it inside a plastic um, sheet protector and I had this up on my bulletin board as well. And so because of this, I can use a dry erase marker and I can write what early finisher activity I want them to complete. You want your early finisher activities to be open-ended. And typically I like to pick something that wasn't a lot of prep. And I honestly would just let them explore with manipulatives, like give them, allow them to play with geo boards or explore with pattern blocks or linking cubes. And so a lot of time I would just give them an activity that they could do with manipulative exploration and that would be their early finisher activity. But I always had something for early finishers so that they were not coming up and interrupting me at the teacher table. They could just check their I'm done now what board. They could see what activity was written down and then they could go and work on that until it was time to rotate. And last tip number five is to implement a transition signal. So this could be anything from a bell, it could be a hand clapper, or it could be even my personal favorite, a wireless doorbell. But what you're gonna need is something that is going to make a sound that when your students hear that sound, they know that they are supposed to stop what they're doing. It doesn't matter what activity they're working on. When they hear that transition sound, they stop what they're doing, they turn and they face you and they wait for further instructions. My personal favorite was a wireless doorbell. I got mine on Amazon. It was maybe like $20, but I am telling you this was the one of the best investments I ever made for my classroom. One, because kids think that it's super fun and all it does is it just plugs into an outlet and then you have a like little remote and you press the button and it can make all kinds of fun chimes. And so kids think that it was really fun and it's loud enough so that students can hear it. And so what would happen, I would ring the bell and let's say we were getting ready to transition. So the first time I would ring the bell, they would stop their activity, they would turn and face me. I am going to say, okay, it's time to clean up, get ready to rotate. I might give them like one or two minutes tops to clean up whatever they're doing. Then when I press the button um, on the bell again, then that means it's time for them to transition and they know that they can rotate and move to the next table. But by implementing some sort of transition signal, this is going to allow your students to know exactly what they are supposed to do when it comes to transition time. It gives them a signal to let them know that it's time for them to kind of switch gears and start something else. So there you have it. Those are five simple routines and procedures that you can implement right away to get started with guided maths. Now, I promised I would share if you are interested in any of these posters that I just shared with you, these are a free download in my TPT store. So I'm gonna link the description below in this video. Click on that link and head on over and you can download these posters for free and start using them in your classroom right away. As always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.